When beloved banjo icon Helen Baker passed away in 2008, just shy of her 100th birthday, the banjo world lost one of its last living links to the pinnacle of mainstream popularity it enjoyed during the jazz age of the 1920s and 30s. Although considered a musician's musician in a male-dominated field, Baker is also remembered for her comic wit as well as an eager willingness to help anyone interested in learning to play the banjo. Helen Baker was born in 1909 in Pennsylvania prior to her family's move to Cleveland where she grew up and spent much of her life. As a hub of the traveling theatrical profession, Cleveland hosted many of the vaudeville era's greatest performers, and as such, it was not unusual for youngsters in the city to be prompted into show business by their star-struck parents. A product of this mindset, Helen Baker was enrolled in the Cleveland Institute of Music at the age of 13, where she studied mandolin and guitar, but was naturally drawn to the most popular instrument of the day, the tenor banjo. Although Baker quickly mastered her instruments, for women of the era, performing opportunities were limited. While men led and played in orchestras, many talented women were relegated to either singing or teaching music if they hoped to remain in the profession at all. One exception to this gender segregation were the all-girl orchestras, which became popular in the late 1920s. In 1928, while still in her teens, Helen Baker began her professional performance career, traveling the country in her first female orchestra called the Dictators. Returning to Cleveland, a seasoned veteran, life on the road had taught Helen the commitment which was necessary to be a professional musician. While she toyed with the idea of becoming an accountant, even studying for the profession, by the age of 21, Helen Baker had made a promise to herself that music would be her life. True to this belief, she continued working in various orchestras and productions in Cleveland, waiting for her big break, which unknowingly was just around the corner. Ina Ray Hutton was born Odessa Cowan in Chicago in 1916. Her professional career began as a dancer in 1924, and by the early 1930s she had already appeared in several Broadway shows, including the Ziegfeld Follies. With the help of jazz industry powerhouse Irving Mills, Ina Ray Hutton organized her own orchestra, the Melodiers, in 1934, recruiting Helen Baker to be the band's guitarist. While the curiosity of an all-girl orchestra led by a well-proportioned and ceaselessly undulating young blonde contributed tremendously to the band's early popularity, it would be a mistake to conclude that mere novelty was the only thing standing between them and obscurity. Ina Ray Hutton and her melodiers represented the highest concentration of female talent anywhere in the industry. For Helen Baker, the years spent touring, recording, and making movies with Ina Ray Hutton represent a career highlight and level of success which would be a basis for all of her musical endeavors which were to follow. When the Ina Ray Hutton Orchestra disbanded in 1939, Helen joined Hutton alums Christine Street and Marie Lenz, forming a new trio called the Sophisticates. Working the luxury hotel circuit from the Northeast to the Deep South, their trio was in constant demand until the road-weary Baker decided to return to Cleveland in the late 1940s. Although the guitar had dominated her musical life for the previous decade, the post-World War II nostalgia boom which was gripping the nation gave Helen the chance to return to the tenor banjo. With her impeccable musicianship and fun-loving stage personality, Baker, playing either banjo or guitar, became a fixture in the Cleveland live music scene throughout the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, performing with numerous groups including the String Tones, the Gypsy Strings, Banjo Al and Sister Banjo, and the Banjokers. 
During the same time period, as word of her credentials spread, many aspiring banjoists turned to Helen Baker for banjo instruction. So much so that through the years, she was able to organize several banjo bands made up primarily of her own banjo students. In that setting, Baker took pride in setting high musical standards, insisting that everyone be able to read music and play demanding selections. Although she had reached her 80s, Helen Baker was far from slowing down. Wishing to share her love of the banjo with others during her annual winter residency in Florida, in 1988, she along with banjoist Ollie Austin formed yet another group, the Gulf Coast Banjo Society. Beginning with 12 members, the Gulf Coast Banjo Society currently boasts over 50 members, making their headquarters at the Snookhaven Resort a mecca for banjo players and fans. That same year, with her wit and musicianship firmly intact, Helen Baker was also a headline performer at the New England Banjo Fest. But this section of the country likes classical music. So I'm going to play and sing a classic for you, and that's called Chickens. <laughs> See? Poor rooster's dead now. They laid him away. But his son is making those pullets lay. They're laying eggs now, just like they used to. By her own request, Helen Baker wished to simply be remembered as someone who truly loved the banjo. Through her lifetime of devotion to performance and teaching of the instrument, touching thousands of people along the way, it is safe to say that her wish continues to be granted. <laughs>